Hi again, uh, let's continue our discussion of JavaScript and we're gonna continue working on our shopping cart, right? And learning basic JavaScript along the way. So, so far we've got um, some code here that, you know, tells us how many items we have in the cart and it adds, you know, four items to the cart, right? And you know, if I look at the console here, you can see that it says, you know, you have four items in your cart. We haven't gotten to where we're gonna build the UI yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually, right? So um, in our last video, we um, constructed an object and gave it keys and we assigned values to those keys, right? And then over here, we counted the, the, the length of the cart, right? So if we have an array, we can say length and ask how many items are there, right? So what do we wanna do now? We have a cart and it has uh, four items that look like this. It's got name, you know, price and quantity. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to print each of those items and say what the name is, what the price is, what the quantity is, and then maybe go even further and say what the total price is for that item. So in other words, if something was, you know, $2 and we had three of them in the cart, then it should print $6 for the total, okay? So to do this, what we need to do is we need to loop. Okay, so a loop in JavaScript lets us repeat a block of code any number of times. And we've got the length here. So essentially, if we have X number or length number of items in the cart, we'd wanna repeat length number of times once for each item in the cart, right? Um, let, let's do that. Let's leave this message here, because I like having this, you know, you have X number of items in your cart, but uh, let's also make a loop. So inside show items, I'm gonna say four, and then say um, curly braces, and then what I'll do is I'll say let i equal zero semicolon i less than cart dot length semicolon i plus equals one okay whoa that's a kind of a lot of code okay let's let's read this very carefully okay let's zoom in on it very closely here okay what just happened here let me even move this a little bit so we can see it separated all by itself okay so this is a for loop so it begins with four okay and the basic syntax looks like this. So you say four parentheses and curly brackets, right? So you set a condition for a loop. You say like how many times this loop is gonna run or you set some condition like this loop will run until something happens, right? Okay, and the curly brackets here define the block of code that is run each time the loop loops. Okay, and the condition here is checked every time the loop runs. Okay, so before the loop runs, we check the code, and if it's okay to run the, uh, the loop, we do the code in the block, and then we go back up and we check the condition again. Okay, so let me undo that and put this back here. So what does this, this condition thing look like? Okay, there's three parts to it, okay? The first part is, the, um, is a variable definition. Okay, so, and there's a few different kinds of loops, but this is like a very basic one, a for loop, okay? With a for loop, we define a variable. In my case, the variable is named i, and you give it an initial starting value. In my case, it's zero. And then in the middle here, we set the condition. So we're gonna do the code in the code block here if i is less than cart.length. Now we saw before that the cart length is four, right? So this is gonna loop as long as i is less than four. So on the first loop, i is zero, that would be less than four. So we would do the block here, okay? Whatever code we, we put inside here, right? Okay, at, at the end here, after the second semicolon there, right? Um, and you gotta have the semicolon here. It can't be the comma or some other character. You can't leave that out, okay? So just be careful of this, right? It's gotta be, you know, uh, condition, let i equal zero, uh, semicolon, some, you know, criteria for your loop, right? So we say i is less than length, semicolon, and then we say, what happens at the end of every loop? So at the end of every loop, I'm gonna say i plus equals one. So the plus equal means add 
this value on the right to the item on the left. So in our case, we should start at zero. We should loop while i is less than cart length, which is four. So as long as i is less than four, we're going to keep looping. And then over here, at the end of every loop, we're going to add one to i. So eventually, we'll get to i of four, and then we'll stop looping, right? And we'll stop at four because four is equal to, but not greater than i. I mean, greater than the length, right? So if i is 4 and the length is 4, then i is equal to but not greater than, and that will end the loop, okay? Let's give it a try. So what do we want to do here? Maybe I want to say, uh, you know, console.log, and uh, I'm going to use the back quotes again, okay? So that's the special character here, so we can combine some variables there. And then I'll do dollar sign, cart, uh, bracket, I. So remember, um, if we say cart bracket and the, um, I'm going to put some spaces in here to make this a little easier to read, right? If we say array and bracket, if we put a number in here, then it'll give us the item at that index. So in my case, if I has a value of zero, it should give us the name apple, because that was the first item in our cart. And if I has a value of one, it'll give us the second item, right? So in an array, the first item is always index zero, and the second item is index one, and the third item's index two, and the fourth item is index three, right? So as we count from zero to, um, to length, then we will be printing each item in the cart by getting at it from it, its index, and we're using i to track that, okay? Let's give it a try, right? So if I if I close up, let me get rid of those extra spaces there. You know, here maybe we'll put a dash in front of this guy for fun, right? And then when I when I refresh it here, um, why does that always? Let me save this file here um, and do it again. Wait, what did I do there? Um, oh, there. I don't know why it did that to me, but. Um, Oh yeah, I made a mistake here too. So uh, here's my here's my cart there, and it says object object. I, I put um, cart bracket i, so that gives me the whole object, right? It's this whole thing right here. But actually, I just want the name. So I'm gonna say um, dot name like this. So cart bracket i dot name, and that should give me the name of an object. And I see apple, orange, opinion, and frisbee, right? Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's do a little bit more work here. Maybe I also want to know the price of the item, so I'll do dollar sign, and then I'll say uh, cart bracket i dot price, and then when I refresh over here, you can see apples are 99 cents, oranges are $1.29, opinion is two cents, and frisbee is 9.92. Okay. So if I want to see characters like printed out, you can see the dash there just gets printed. Um, if I want to print a variable, I wrap it in the dollar sign and the curly braces right inside these back ticks, right? If I want to see the dollar sign like in front of the price, I can just add that here, you know, as long as it goes outside of the, um, of the dollar sign curly brackets, right? Then we're okay. It looks a little weird, but that's, that's okay, right? Okay, and let's do one more thing, right? So let's say after this, I want to say times, and then I also want to print the quantity. So I'll do dollar sign, curly braces, uh, cart bracket i dot uh, quantity. Okay, let me zoom out just like a little bit more so I can see everything, right? Um, maybe I'll do this too. I'll, I'll switch this to spaces and make it two spaces. I have to reformat this. Don't worry, I'll, I'll go back and do that before the next video. Anyway, so I'll save all this, and then I'll refresh it here, and you can see I have one apple, one orange, one opinion, and one frisbee. So that's pretty good. Um, and in this video, we went over the uh, for loop, 
right? So in the next video, we'll talk more about this for loop and we'll talk about conditionals. Like these are like if else statements. So they ask questions like, hey, is this value greater than or does this name match something? And we'll use that to our advantage. You can see that right here, um, if I have apple, orange, and opinion, if I added a second um, apple, you see it shows two apples there. Actually, let me put this one because the the console kind of um, tries to be efficient. And if you have two lines that match, it just shows a number two here rather than printing it twice. If I put the apple down here, then when I run the code, you'll see apple gets listed twice. So this, like if my shopping cart looked like that, that might be confusing to people because you know, it shows me like Apple 99 cents quantity one, and then again, Apple 99 cents quantity one, where really what I want to do is, is show Apple 99 cents quantity two, right? So we'll do that in the next video, okay? But anyway, in this video, we went over um, the for loop. So make sure that you can do this. Write another for loop for fun, right? Um, maybe modify this one or change the way this thing prints out, right? Um, add some more items to the cart and see if it loops over them, right? So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll continue in the next video and add some more features.